Hey, welcome back to The Ready State. I want to take a second and talk about my two daughters for a minute. And more importantly, I'm going to talk about this thing called Q-Angle. And the Q in Q-Angle actually stands for quadriceps. Was well, this an easier way to say it? So the implications of this is I have one daughter who's growing very tall, and her hips and her legs look like this. She has legs that go up to her neck, and uh, they are straight. In fact, she is like a little torsion pig. I mean, the legs straight, and she walks with her feet straight, poof, can create all this really powerful torsion. The other daughter, who is a pretty good athlete, her legs do this. They come in and drop. And that's an exaggeration. But this is the Q angle. And what you can see is that this line, straight down, less of a Q angle, wider hips with a femur that comes in and down, makes this a higher Q angle. Now the implications on Q angle, we used to throw women under the bus and we're like, oh yeah, all the ACLs happen because of the Q angle. And it happens because of the height of the trochlear notch, it happens because of the hormone. This is not true. The implications are that somehow women's geometry and anthropometry is resultant or responsible for their ACL injury rate, which is actually six to eight times the rate of men last time I checked. Now that's not just all Title IX and more women playing sports, but this Q angle has some unique features that we have to be aware of. And so sometimes when we see Q angle, we think valgus knee force. And think of this as that it's just the body's way of solving problems. So for example, this kid will be faster, linear, straight line sprinter. This kid would be way better at things like cycling or even uh, things like breaststroke or water polo. She's doing the egg beater, right? This mechanic has some unique advantages, but it has some unique disadvantages. So the good news is that we end up treating both of these populations the same. We talk about having the foot straighter, for example, all the time. But a person who is either very low Q angle or almost a little varus, this knees out, they can create high amounts of torsion in even when the leg is turned out a little bit, AKA like the, some of the Chinese lifters, you see that they're still able to create a lot of stability through the system. Kids with a higher Q angle with that knee is valgus, when the foot turns out, notice, so this would be an, an exaggerated position, when that foot turns out, the force on the knee is even greater. Now look, there's a lot of things that go to creating that stability, being able to have hamstring control, being able to uh, have the foot in a position where the hip works really well, right? We've talked about before that we do monster walks with feet straight, we do hinging with feet straight because it allows us better access to the rotation of the hip. You start to turn the feet out and try to resist from that position, you see that the hip musculature, that glute med, for example, highly inhibited, just not very functional at that end range. So the implications are that this child will lose her ability to stabilize her hip sooner than this kid. But since we're both hammering on feet straight, it turns out that even if I have a high Q angle and my foot is straight, that leg mechanically is very safe and very stable even when there's a valgus force. The difference is with the foot turned out, on a kid with higher Q angle, we're gonna see diminishment of hip rotation earlier in range, so that kid doesn't have to go very far before she starts to lose some of that power and control, and she's exposed to higher force loads through the joint, which potentially then, I've turned off the mechanism, now the knee is in this unwound position, and whoop, it doesn't take much to tear that ACL or see that MCL strain in this person. Now again, lots of things go into ACL injury, but one of the things we can do for our kids is to coach them. We run and jump with foot straight. With the foot straight, we're automatically gonna have better recruitment of the hip musculature. We've demonstrated that a billion times here with the strongest athletes on the planet. Check out Donnie Thompson, pretty strong powerlifter, world record holder, world champion. When I pull his knees and with his feet turned out, I can drag his knees apart and get his feet straight. Can't budge that kid at all. And again, the idea is, hey, when I'm in a good position and have access to my anthropometry and my physiology, I can make more choice and decisions. I can cut and resist more powerfully. The kids at Power Athlete have talked about this ad infinitum. Thank you, John Wellborn. But the idea here is that, hey, I'm always trying to get my kids with feet straighter. Why? Because it translates to more effective movement. It translates to more power. It gives me more movement choice. 
But for kids who end up with a little bit higher Q angle because of the Gen X, uh, these are my two daughters. This is a case study. It matters more that I'm on the details of this athlete a lot more because she's going to be exposed to loss of position, loss of forces early in range than my little uh, tall reed whippet. Hopefully that helps you understand why we make the decisions we make and why we think we can radically improve and sort of lower this ACL injury rate, even though it's so complex, if we begin to say, hey, you got to have your feet straight. Hopefully that helps.